Hello again, everyone. It's Todd Stritch, the horror nerd here at New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival at the fabulous Showboat Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I have the distinct pleasure of standing here with the star of Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3, Mr. Jeffrey Weissman. Jeffrey, how are you? I'm good, though. This this gal, this girl over here, she's undressing me with her eyes. I... <laughs> she has a habit of doing that. <laughs> use your hands next time. I said use your hands. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, how have you been? It's Good. been a while since I saw you at the at an early New Jersey horror con. Edison, How's it going? It was the first yeah, New Jersey the very first con. one. Yeah, yeah I uh, remember that Ryan in 2008, I think it was, uh, asked me to get the autographs of the cast, cast and crew that had come to the very first Back to the Future uh, reunion at the Hollywood show. He couldn't make it because his his girlfriend had been in a car wreck or some horrible. Uh, tragedy had befallen him. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, God, yes. <laughs> and I helped him out, and he said, I, I, I love you. <laughs> and uh, so we've been friends since then. Uh, he even put me into one of his movies. Yes, I was in a horror film directed by Ryan Scott Weber. Uh, if you remember the uh, the Merry Horror Trilogy. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. He, uh, he, he actually offered me the sheriff in the first one. Oh, and really? I, and I really? was like, uh, can you afford to bring me out? Can you go union? Blah, blah. And no. Uh, well, maybe the next one. He made enough money to make the second one. I couldn't do the second one. But in the third one, he was like, I got Robert England. I got so on and so forth. Come on, just shoot something with your phone. And I was, so I got a pro. pro uh, so that crew. was Witch's Blood. Witch's Blood. I, I had my, a small cameo in that. So I will always be able to say I was in a movie with you. <laughs> How do you like that? And my cat. My cat is in there. I insisted if my cat's going to be in it. I, do, I don't want to. Spoiler. When you see my character's blood splash everywhere. My cat runs through it. And uh, I said, if, if the cat's going to be in the film, uh, you got to use his whole name in the credits. So it's uh, Ramsey's Cat Hotep, Kitty Uncommon. Look him up. He's got an IMDb page. He's probably got more credits than I do. No, he's got the one. Pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, you might have him. Oh, oh, good. I can't let him go uh, too, too far into the industry. It goes to his head. And, I'll be a total diva you know, and making demands. One and, in the yeah. morning, he's waking us up. You know, <laughs> Feed me. <laughs> Scratch my back. So, uh, Jeff, I, I'm sure you get asked this a lot. Uh -oh. but, uh, yes, I'm a virgin. <laughs> How did you know I was going to ask that? That's crazy. Because there are vampires around here. <laughs> it's a horror con, for God's sake. <laughs> How... How challenging was it to step into the role that was played by another actor, um, you know, to, to complete out the Back to the Future trilogy? It's sort of rhetorical, right? Yeah. No, I. <laughs> it was incredibly difficult. First of all, I wasn't, uh, say, cast for the role uh, from the go-get. They, they kind of did smoke and mirrors saying, uh, we were interested in you for being a photo double. And I was like, oh, I guess they need George in multiple places at the same time. At first, they wouldn't even tell me what the project was. Mm -hmm. But then uh, then they started fitting me for uh, prosthetic makeups and body casts to do the spin that was cut in the pizza scene. Uh, and I did a screen test in the young George makeup. This, this here, I don't know if you can tilt your camera to see that. Is that on frame? You got it. And uh, lift it up. Yeah, I, this it weighs, up a it weighs a ton. All right, we got it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, for this this makeup and during the screen test I remember uh, Bob Z Robert Zemeckis asking Dean Cundy Dean what do you think and Dean said uh, I think we got Crispin without the trouble uh, so kind of some red flags or some lights started going off I'm mm. like interesting and my makeup artist actually Ken, Ken Chase the original design designer of the makeup he said you know Crispin's out you're going to be George and I was, I couldn't fathom how they were going to do it without Crispin and I had been friends with Crispin at one point when I was up for being his uh, photo double. I called him up and left him a message. Crispin, you know, remember me from the film we did at AFI in 83? You know, say a good word for me. I need the work. Didn't hear back to, from him until part three came out. And, uh, and that's when I learned that they didn't have the rights to that use of his life mask right. for my makeups. Right. So he needed a suit, try to get some justice served over that. It kind of became a nightmare for me, but yes, it was a challenge walking, stepping into the role. Luckily, I have uh, a talent for mimicry 
in that I, I, if you went to Universal Studios in Hollywood between 87 and 2001, I played Stan Laurel and Charlie Chaplin and Groucho Marx. So I've learned to observe and study the mannerisms and the weight and the carrying the, the pacing, everything uh, of these different characters. And with Crispin, it was really obvious. He, he had the center of gravity that pulls him forward, kind of leads with his head, has this hand stuff, this awkward timing. And it, so it was really a gift to have such a strong characterization to, to uh, you know, take off from or have to recreate. As you know, we recreated the uh, enchantment under the sea dance, the kiss on the dance floor, and, and the fight with Biff. Uh, and we you know, went back to the source material. We had playback of those scenes so we could make sure we were getting it precisely correct. And then uh, in the future, of course, hanging upside down. It's interesting, I, I, just a few weeks ago, I, I got my Paradox script, the Back to the Future 2 and 3 were in one script called Paradox, and those scenes in the McFly kitchen, uh, there were about eight rewrites. And it, it was clear to me that they didn't know if they had Crispin or not. They obviously had to wait till the 11th hour before they decided which version of the, the scene they were going to use. In fact, in one of the versions, Marty is in the ortholev hung upside down. You know, they, did, they had all these different things going on. So when I came in, you know, they didn't really know me well, so they started giving George's lines to Lorraine and to, to Marty, and I was like, hey, I'm an actor. I, I can handle some lines. And luckily, they gave them back to me a few, and, and I got to come up with a few, like, how's granddad's little pumpkin? Uh, because hanging upside down, my, my head was butt level with Marlene's button her hot pants, <laughs> which made her butt look like a, a pumpkin. <laughs> so naturally, how's granddad's little pumpkin? Uh, and, and then uh, fruit, please. I, I, got, I got to eat a banana upside down that Mar Marlene gives me, and, and the, the peel kept slapping me in the face. You ever try to eat a banana upside down? I can't say that I have. You don't want to. It's not I'm a, pretty it's sure not I don't want to try. Zemeckis thought it was funny, but he didn't keep it in the film. I have, I though have very rare photo from that scene that's cut. For any of you that need a rare photo, <laughs> you can only get it here. Um, so it, uh, pretty hard, very difficult. Some of the days we worked, of course, we only had Michael on weekends and nights because he was doing the final season of Family Ties mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. And some of the times that we had him more than just the weekend, I remember the week that we shot the kitchen in the McFly's, I had a 19-hour, a 21-hour, and a 26-hour long day. Wow. Often without eight hours in between uh, coming back to be back in the makeup chair. And, and the makeup took four hours to get on, another hour at the end of the day to take off. So it was, it was pretty grueling. Wow. Stories you will only hear here at New Jersey HorrorCon, folks. And uh, so I've got a lot more stories about Twilight Zone movie, uh, working with John Lithgow and George Miller on that, and uh, the remake of Nightmare 20,000 Feet, uh, Pale Rider with Clint Eastwood, my, my work is Screech's Guru, the High Geek on Saved by the Bell. I don't know, come visit, I'll tell you stories. Do you have a favorite role? You've been in so many things. Do you have a personal I, I favorite? Like, I like dinner crescents. <laughs> No, I, I... I didn't know there would be stand-up comedy. I love comedy. <laughs> I, I had uh, a great time just recently playing the Robin Williams role, Perry, in a stage version of The Fisher King. Very We cool. raised money for Robin's favorite charities, the homeless and animals, and, uh, and getting into that role, because it's both drama and comedy, I love that. It was, it was really thrilling. I uh, uh, played Igor in the musical version of Young Frankenstein. Cool. Worked my tail off dancing in 12 numbers and singing. Um, I, you know, it's really hard for me to answer what's your favorite role because I love doing stage, I love doing film, I love doing television, uh, environmental theater, I do living history, and I kind of love it all. Right now I'm, I'm developing a project as Mark Twain. Nice. I, I uh, played cool. Mark Twain in a a PBS movie called Mark Twain, uh, Dreamland, Mark Twain in Jerusalem. Hmm. And I'm trying to develop a sustainable series where I play Twain uh, and his version of American history. So it's education and entertainment. Very cool. Yeah. Jeffrey, before we go, tell the viewers, if you will, how they can uh, follow your career. Oh, don't follow um, me. I'll call a cop. 
<laughs> I know I I uh, can be found on Twitter at at Jeff with one F J E F W E I S S M A N on Instagram at Jeffrey J Weissman on Facebook my fan page is at Jeffrey Weissman actor my personal page has been at the 5,000 limit for 10 years um, Look me up at uh, www.jeffreyweissman.com. There's an email button right there. You can email me, and I'll write you back. Very cool. Jeffrey, thank you again for a few more minutes of your time. It's great to see you it's again. It's great, always great to see you, and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend here at New Jersey Horicon. And hopefully we'll see you in the future. Yes, when we go back. <laughs> See what I did there? That's right, yeah. It's a good, back to 2015. <laughs> and, and today just happens to be the 12th where Doc Brown yes. hits his head on the toilet and comes up with the, <laughs> the flux capacitor. Can you see that? That's my pocket capacitor for Make very short, short trips. You run real fast, and then you can change test scores or, you know, take back whatever you said to the girl that upset her. <laughs> Jeffrey Weissman here at New Jersey Horicon and Film Festival at the Showboat in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'm Todd Starooch, the Horror Nerd, signing off. We will see all of you in the next interview.